Hi, everybody. Chris here. So how much time have you spent this week playing with Excel formulae, trying to get them to work? It seems so many people out there spend so much time trying to get Excel formulae to work. And some people even think that to be good at Excel, you've got to be able to write long formulae. There's something of a formula obsession out there. Why is this? Why is this? If you're only focused on Excel formally, the truth is you're missing out on the more powerful features of Excel. Yes, formally are important, but they're not the most important thing in Excel. In this video, over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to introduce you to four things you might never have used in Excel that will deliver more power for you than Excel formally. That's what we're going to do in the next 10 minutes or so. Make sure you download the Excel file in the video description below and work along with me. But if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm an Excel content creator, a lecturer, and real-world consultant. And a mission here on the channel, Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions, is to move you from Excel frustration to Excel clarity and control. So if that sounds good, then show some love for a channel drop us a little subscription because I'm committed this year to doing 50 videos. Yes, it's very simple. I spend my week running a small business, working for organizations large and small across the world on data-related matters, usually to do with Excel. And then I spend 10 minutes every, every week going live on YouTube, giving you some insights. If that sounds good, drop us a subscribe. And then when we get to 95,000 subs, we're gonna start ticking these off, trying to get to 100,000 subs uh this year so with that said let's get into today's presentation so when did you last see a formula that looks something like this you know it wasn't difficult it wasn't difficult to me to bring together the materials for this presentation because these two formally i've been working on just this week Yes, these two formally are from actual projects this week. So let me know in the comments, what's your experience of super long formally and have you spent time having to debug, having to uh, reformulate this kind of formula? There's no time, there's no doubt. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of stress. Do we need to be using Excel formally that much? I'm not so sure, but why is there this obsession about Excel formally. It seems for some people, if you're talking about Excel, you must be talking about Excel formally. Well, I've got three reasons here. Firstly, uh, there's this perception that um, formula building is an advanced skill. And still worse, there's this perception that if you can build a long Excel formula, somehow you're good at Excel just because you can understand the complicated stuff. But the truth is, that really complicated stuff, it's not necessary. And I'd go further than that. It's not just that it's not necessary. It's actually best avoided. Yes, um, if you've got long formulae in your spreadsheet, it means you've got some kind of design issue. You Most likely, you have too few columns. You have too few columns. So our approach here at, here at Tiger is we always, we always have more columns and simpler formulae. Yes, this formula I've been redesigning the model that contains this formula. It's now got 60 columns in. This model's got 60 columns in, but the formulae are much simpler. That's because uh, long formulae are best avoided. Now, formula obsession, a big part of it is to do with the creator community these days. Now, don't get me wrong. I love uh, the YouTube Excel creator community. I'm a part of it myself. But it does create this buzz, this kind of hysteria around new Excel formulae, sometimes with promises, for example, that a new Excel formula is going to change the game for you. And it's just an easy thing. It's an easy, th easy thing for a content creator to do, to create a new video about an Excel formulae. And this kind of overemphasizes the importance of Excel formulae in real world practice. That's something you've got to uh, bear in mind. And thirdly, a working formula, you know, it provides closure. We know what it's like working with data-related matters, working with Excel in real-life organizational situations. You know, it's a bit chaotic, and it's nice from time to time to have that closure, to have that sense, we've completed it, mate. It's all done. It's all complete. But that's really kind of a false sense of security. That's because Excel problems are never solved. Excel problems in the real world, if you've ever tried to roll out a spreadsheet in an organization, as we've done many times here at Tiger, we know Excel problems are never solved. They're only managed over time. So unfortunately, it's not a crossword or a chess puzzle, Excel. It's much more than that. It has much more impact in the real world. And that's why 
we can't focus just on the formula. I've got some consequences of this uh, formula obsession. It's the impression that Excel is like a foreign language because it depends on these barely decipherable formulae. And this really increases the idea that's not very good English, but you know what I mean? It strengthens the idea that Excel is for specialists, that Excel is a specialist and that it's for geeks who sit in these ivory towers and do geeky stuff with Excel. We have the opposite view, view at Tiger. We think Excel is for normal professionals to use. And what we're trying to do here at Tiger is move normal professionals from Excel frustration to Excel control. So it creates this false impression that Excel is some kind of specialism. Secondly, it takes attention away from the most powerful features in Excel. Yes, don't get me wrong, formally are a very useful tool, but as we're going to see in this video, there's more powerful stuff in Excel, things like Power Query, things like VBA, data validation tables. We're going to cover those in the next 10 minutes or so. So what I'm arguing is a change in mindset, a broader appreciation of what Excel is, the tools available and their impact could transform your approach to data related tasks, could transform your career and could make life a lot easier in your organization. So you're saying, Chris, if we're not thinking about formally when we're, when we're doing Excel tasks, what should we be thinking about? Great question, and I'm glad you asked. Here's our four foundational concepts that we use when we think about client projects, when we think about training, anything to do with Excel. You're only ever doing one of four things. You're only ever doing one of four things when you're using Excel. You're doing data management, which is getting the data into shape, collating data sets, cleansing data sets. You're doing data analysis, which is trying to understand the story of, of the data, producing uh, charts, producing dashboards, things like that. You're doing modeling, uh, which is where formula are involved, which is creating some kind of logic chain, for example, in a budget plan or something like that. We're not going to go into this in too much detail now. And there's automation. Automation is the process of getting those manual tasks done at the click of a button. So these are the four main areas of Excel practice. So the question is, with these four areas, how prominent, how important are Excel formally in these four areas? And the truth is, Excel formally are important for modeling, but they're not so important in these other areas. Yes, you could do some data analysis with Excel formally. Yes, you could do some data cleansing jobs with Excel formally, but we're only focused on Excel formally, really, if we're doing modeling. Yep. And if you'd like to know more about this idea, fantastic. These four concepts underpin our 30 day Excel analyst program, which is a full Excel course available for free right here on YouTube. The link is in the video description below. It's for you, your colleagues, whoever needs an Excel uh, course. The links in the video description below. I would love to see you there. So four tools, four tools that have nothing to do with formulae. You have to be using these tool, tools, guys. You have to be using these tools. These are going to uh, these are going to deliver more value for you than Excel formally are. So let's go ahead. Firstly, tables. I recommend tabulating your data. Now, long-term viewers of the channel might be thinking, well, Chris, uh, you used to be a bit anti-Excel tables. Yes, that is true. There are pros and cons to using Excel tables, as I've spoken about on the channel. We won't talk about those today. But tabulating data is the way forward. So how to do that? This is already tabulated, but if it was a range, uh, you'll select the range and then go to format as table, which is our option here. This solves one major problem that many professionals across the world are dealing with, which is the size of a data set. You can easily uh, make this table bigger or smaller. And when you, when you do build formulae related to this table, you can reference the columns and the formulae are going to adjust in size according to the data. So we achieve what's called dynamic quality, dynamic quality. So no matter how this data set changes in size, our formulae are going to work. So our first tip is to tabulate your data, use tables, nothing to do with Excel formally. And our second one is pivot tables. Just go back to our presentation quickly. We said tables, also pivot tables. Yes. A little bit scary. And as with all of our techniques today, uh, there's links in the video description below, uh, which will take you to beginner videos about all of these techniques. But let's quickly create a pivot table so we can feel the power of the pivot table. Let's suppose we wanted to just 
Uh, count the number of uh, walks that each dog has done. Count the number of walks that each dog has done. Yes, we could do that with a formula, but if you set up a pivot table, you're going to be able to do uh, so much more here. I'm just going to resize the table. Uh, so I've pre-selected the data. I'm going to go insert tables and then pivot table here. And then we can choose where the pivot table goes. Yes, because I pre-selected the data, I don't have to worry about this. I'm going to put it on a new worksheet and we've got a pivot table straight away. So when we think about pivot tables, we've got to think what's the specific question we want to answer and what columns in our data are going to help us answer that question. So we're interested in how many walks has each dog done? So I can just go to dog's name um, and I can go to I go to anything really. Um, but let's go to let, let's think about the, the, the revenue per dog here, the revenue per dog. So you can see I've just ticked the fee and suddenly I've got a table straight away with the exact analysis I need. I could do a, a few more operations here to, to count the number of walks if I wanted to do that. Pivot tables, you've absolutely got to be using a uh, link in the video description below. Get that data analysis, pivot charts, get a beautiful visual, visual analysis really easily. OK. So tables and pivot tables, things that got nothing to do with formulae, but I think you should be using data validation. Data validation, probably the most underutilized thing in Excel that's going to save you so many headaches, particularly if you have data quality issues. So looking at our data set, we've got some minor data quality issues. We're expecting to see dogs' names. In this column, we've got some things that are cancelled. We're going to cleanse this in a second using Power Query. But one way to avoid this would be to use data validation. Now, Alt-A-V-V -V, uh, on the Windows PC. I'm having a problem with my Alt key today, as you can see, but I can go to Data, Data Tools, and then Data Validation. Here, the concept of data validation is it's going to limit the entries that can go into the cell limit the entries that can go into the cell. And that means you can avoid data cleansing later because you've controlled the data that's come into the cell. And in this cell, I only want the dog's names to appear. So I can, I can select the list option here, and that's going to create a list when someone clicks on the cell. A really easy way to create a quick list or a quick drop-down menu is just to type the words that you want to appear in the drop-down menu here. Uh, separated by commas, we can hit OK, and then we have a nice drop down menu here. This is data validation, nothing to do with formulae, but incredibly useful for controlling what goes into your data sets. If your data sets are clean, your life's going to be so much easier in terms of getting analysis and getting the stuff that you want. So, pivot tables, tables, data validation, power query. So powerful, this tool, and once again, massively underutilized and has very little or nothing to do with Excel formally. So we mentioned we've got a few data cleansing issues here. So I think the majority of data sets in Excel have some data cleansing issues. How could you solve them? Well, Power Query is a great way to solve them. We can do many other things with Power Query. We can bring multiple data sets together. We can get data sets from different data sources. Beginner video on Power Query is in the video description below. It's one of our most popular videos from the past few months. Go ahead and check it out. But let's do something quickly with Power Query. I pre-selected our data here. Going to go to get data uh, from sources. I'm going to say from table range. Now, because we pre-selected our data, uh, we should find that Power Query loads up. I'm in the Power Query editor over on the other screen now. Uh, the Power Query editor loads up and it looks something like this. So it's it's going to take the data and it's going to kick it out somewhere out in somewhere else in the spreadsheet. But in the process, we can perform some operations on the data. So let's suppose in this walk code column, we wanted to uh, remove these cancelled entries. We can just uh, untick the box here, click OK. And then when we load this uh, back to the spreadsheet, uh, what we'll find is, I'll say close and load, load this back to the spreadsheet and it will appear in the spreadsheet now on a different uh, tab. And we can see now, yeah, table one. So we can see now our data has been cleansed of those entries that we didn't want. So that's a really simple operation. 
a really simple operation you can do a power query you can filter out some entries so much other stuff you can do begin a video in the video description below so power query something else that's got nothing to do with formula that is incredibly powerful highly recommend you get to know power query finally a bit of a favorite for me a bit of a favorite here on the channel is macros yes using excel vba to automate those manual processes we're all doing manual processes in excel even i'm doing manual processes in excel copying data around it feels very onerous having to do it every day in our download file the links in the video description below for the download file of course uh, we've got our destination sheets we've got a little bit of excel vba in the file i can select our dog here benefiting from our data validation from our drop down menu just click the button here and i can see the data coming straight into the file so don't get me wrong guys don't get me wrong i do like excel formulae but there is this kind of culture of formula obsession. And if you are too fixated on formula, you are missing out on so much powerful stuff in Excel. Links to follow-up videos for this video are in the video description below. And you've got a, uh, a picture on the screen right now, the next video to watch. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.